Lord should right here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. What would cause a man that has seen thousands of miracles under his ministry, uh, whose mother was actually healed at a Catherine Coleman service, kind of raised with or Roberts, Catherine Coleman, a diet of that. Uh, when he gets life-threatening cancer, resort to the best prayer he knows and the best medicine he knows rather than just prayer alone. I'm going to ask Pastor Rod Parsley why in just a moment. Get ready for an exclusive prophecy event with Sid Roth and his special guest, Rod Parsley, and his worship team. Satan wanted to silence Rod Parsley and take him out. He received a shocking diagnosis of cancer on his vocal cord, but Rod Parsley could not be silenced. God healed him, and he is ready to share a powerful prophetic message about God's soon coming grand finale. He will share what God revealed to him about a roadmap for living victoriously in the volatile days of the end times leading up to our glorious departure. Find out how to prepare for the return of our soon coming King. And now, here's your host, Sid Roth. I'd like to welcome our ISN viewers as well as our broadcast partners, GB America, METV, which covers all of the Middle East and Israel. Are you ready? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want you to give an It's Supernatural welcome to, I'll call him America's pastor, Pastor Rod Parsley. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Pastor Rod has been ministering for four decades. He pastors one of the most dynamic ministries in the country. And many years ago, at the age of 27, mm. he had an open vision. And I have to believe that <laughs> when you went through what you just went through, right. that no one should have to do it. Yes. You were reminded of that vision. I was, Sid. First of all, thanks for having me. I like to be right in the middle of things that are supernatural, and I know that you do as well. Well, I... I was turning 60. I was attacked with vocal cord cancer after writing the book Silent No More, of course, and the enemy zeroed in on that and decided he'd do what he could to silence my voice. And during that period, God reminded me that a man's life is often in three phases. Moses' life was a division of three 40-year seasons. For 40 years, he was a prince in Pharaoh's house. For the next 40 years, he was a castaway, a sheep herder in Midian. But at the end of the second phase, getting ready to go into the third phase, Moses had a burning bush experience with God Almighty. God showed up and told him that he was born to become a man to deliver an entire nation born in bondage. And so God began to deal with me about the three phases of my life. In the third phase of Moses' life, he became a king in Jezreel. So God began to deal with me, and he began to say to me, do you remember the vision I gave you? Sometimes we get away from the supernatural. We've had several supernatural encounters, and suddenly God reminds us of one. So God took me back now at 60 to where I was when I was 27 in 1984 when I was standing on the platform of our church and the entire back wall of the sanctuary, we call it a tabernacle, disappeared. Suddenly, I saw a scene play out before my very eyes. It was more real than the camera I'm looking at right now. And God entered that scene. I saw what I recognized to be the presence of Satan himself. As my eyes went upward, I saw a crown upon his head. The skyline of that crown 
was my home city, Columbus, Ohio, twinkling like stars in the heaven were the lights in the buildings wrapped around his head. And suddenly, a sword appeared. It made three revolutions, smote the enemy against the back of his knees. He fell over to the side, and that crown rolled off his head. And suddenly, as if you would zip a zipper, it was gone. The back wall was back. And I began to shout out of my spirit. We still have the video of it. I began to shout, I'm brave enough, I'm strong enough to pick up that crown and place it on the head of our Savior. Well, now at 60, God said, I'm about to enter, you're about to enter your third phase of gospel ministry. I'm going to place a seven times greater anointing on you for healing, deliverance, and salvation of the people of God. And I said, I'll take it. And then, of course, the attack of vocal cord cancer. And, and, and again, you don't have to be a mental giant to know <laughs> who's, when, when you're a, a speaker, when you're a pastor, when you're an evangelist, uh, your voice is mandatory. <laughs> so your voice, he tried to silence, but I heard you say something good. I heard you say that now yes. it's seven times the anointing on your voice Amen. is seven times greater. Amen. Going to reach seven times more people. Yes. It's going to reach seven times more souls for the kingdom, seven times more healings, seven times more demonstration of signs and wonders and miracles. Signs and wonders and miracles that, Sid, point beyond you and me and point those looking directly to the mighty hand of Jehovah Joshua Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we're about ready to have the greatest harvest yes. in history. The greatest. Yes. Now, I'm going to take you back to date, okay. and I want you to tell me what happened. It, it was in June, month of June. 2015, yes. you were shocked to your core. What happened? I, I was. I'd, I'd had a little bit of a sore throat, uh, which when you live in Ohio and you're baptized in pollen several times <laughs> a year, you, you know, you, you kind of get used to a little bit of drainage and so forth. So I saw my, my general practitioner and he said, well, I don't see anything, but this has been going on long enough. I think we need to have you scoped. And I just thought of something you're going to really like. So I, I saw the, uh, the surgeon, and he said, yes, there's something there. And he scheduled an appointment to go ahead and have vocal cord surgery. Well, I called my team together, and my precious wife, Joni, got in the middle of that meeting and produced a little piece of paper. She said, God spoke to me when you wrote Silent No More that the enemy was going to attack your voice with cancer. Hmm. Yes. And so she and probably she, didn't tell you because no, she didn't she want didn't. to put power behind. Exactly. So she didn't tell me. She began to pray. She said, but now that I've seen this manifest, you are not, she gave me a word of knowledge, you are not to have surgery. And I found out later, had I had that surgery, my vocal cords in all probability would have been irreversibly damaged, and wow. I probably never would have preached again. So you're, from now on, you're going to listen to your wife? I'm going to so listen to her. Happy <laughs> wife, happy life. <laughs> All right, but uh, you're jovial now, but yeah. at that time, no. you were not so jovial no. when you got the report of vocal cancer. Yes. You told me you had a, a neighbor or a friend that had the same report. I did. And he's in... Less than two miles from my home. What happened? A, a friend, same, same cancer, squamous cell carcinoma. He refused uh, treatment, and... I said, I'm going to believe that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there's no variableness of turning. Now, there are many people that would say, well, that's a lack of faith to have medicine and prayer. What would you say to them? I would say this, God the Holy Spirit, I believe that every good thing comes from our Father. I believe that, Sid, with all my heart. I do not believe that God gives people sickness and disease to teach them. However, I do believe that in the process, we are all taught. 
Now, I have seen, Thanks. as you shared in the open, I've seen m thousands of instantaneous miracles. At Dominion Camp Meeting, I prayed for a young man who'd been blind for birth, from birth for 21 years. God opened his eyes and gave him 20-20 vision. I prayed for a young man in our church born with hydroencephaly. The his, big head. His head, as big as his shoulders, and a brain stem, but no cerebellum at all, given less than a month to live. That young man today is one of our ushers. He works full time. He graduated from our Harvest Preparatory School because after a Wednesday night service, some people agreed together and spoke the word of God over that little body. And God Almighty did a creative miracle, which of course takes not only the gift of healing, but the gift of miracles in operation at the same time, and gave him a fully formed, fully developed cerebellum. And he lives normally today. Now, you, you told me that you knew instantly this wasn't something natural. This yes. was demonic. Yes. This was uh, the devil. Absolutely. And so what was your strategy? Well, I've always believed that we need to treat sickness and disease uh, and shake it like a rat terrier shakes a mouse, that we should treat it like a rattlesnake in the floorboard of our automobile. It's not of God. It's not of God's kingdom. We live in a cursed planet. And so my wife and I, when our son, Austin, our only son, was three years of age, we received the diagnosis of a life sentence, autism. He was to never go to school, never read a book. My wife and I pulled the van over to the side of the highway and we said, God, what do you want us to do? And he said, you know what to do. Get my word on it attack it spiritually, attack it in the natural, and attack it with a seed. And I said, I'm going to do all three. And my son just graduated from college with a 4.0 grade point average. Now, when I was attacked, all of those, all of those naysayers started eating at me. And some of you have had, a, in fact, I'm speaking to hundreds right now who have had a diagnosis and you feel like it is a lack of faith for you to take a medication, for you to see a doctor, let me tell you what to do. Do what I did. Attack it every way you can. Do you, every... do you see going to a doctor as attacking that evil? Absolutely. The doctors would have never had the knowledge had it not been for God. They would have never had the prescription medications had it not been for God. They would have never had the wisdom had it not been for God. They would have never had the anesthetic had it not been for God. And this is not a time, look, when you are in the middle of the battle and the enemy of your soul threatening to take away the multitude of souls that I win for God's kingdom, the thousands of people that will be healed today as we pray together. When he wants to stop all that, when he's coming in the trenches after you, grab whatever weapon is at your disposal. The important thing is give all the glory to God because he's going to bring you out. I like that. Now, you did, you attacked it. If you just briefly tell me the four things you did, and I might add, you are still doing. I'm still doing. Sid, God spoke to me, Proverbs 420 was the first scripture that he gave me when I received that diagnosis. Proverbs 420, my son, I'm his. He identifies with me. The Lord Jesus identifies with you when he taught you to pray, our father. He's not just Jesus' father, he's your father. Our Father, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings, for they are life to you. And I studied that out. It actually says they are medicine to all your flesh. And God said to me, you take it, and you take it twice a day for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. You speak my word. And then he said, get a prayer cloth, touch and agree. If any two on earth agree, as we're going to do in just a few moments with you, touching anything that we shall ask, it shall be done for us 
by our Father which is in heaven. Number three, receive Holy Communion every single day. Remember that Christ is in you and you are in him as he is in the Father and the Father is in him. And number four, use the Jehovah names of God. In 2017, Jehovah Cherib, the Lord, the sword, that third revolution of my life, seven times greater anointing is going to be released to you this very day. In fact, I speak to you now under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say to every cancer cell, to die in your body now and for a living, life-giving cell to replace it. I command that you have no negative side effects from any treatment or medication or supplement that may be given to you. I stand before you now sitting here in this chair. They did 28 radiation treatments. My throat had third-degree burns inside and outside. How many side effects did you have? Zero. That's what I thought. Zero. <laughs> because I prayed, Sid. They said, look, you're going to have to get ready. We'll probably have to do a tracheotomy. We'll have to do a pick line for medications. Your throat will swell closed. We'll have to give you I stood so strongly against these things, Sid. No tracheotomy, no feeding tube, no pick line, no breathing tube, no tracheotomy. And when they gave me the final report, they said, we've never seen it on this wise. What your body has gone through, and yet you've had none of the side effects. I rebuke those side effects from chemotherapy. I rebuke the side effects of radiation treatment. I declare and decree by the power of the Word of God that His holy anointing breaks through to you now and sets you free, spirit, soul, and body. What was their final report on that horrific, <laughs> life-threatening cancer that you had? Absolutely cancer free. Ha! We'll be right back with Pastor Rod Parsley and a message that had he not been healed, you would never hear. It is perhaps the most important message he's ever delivered, but first...
with more of our Prophecy TV event. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural miracle anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs. The message of the Bible has not changed, but it's a 21st century world out there, and how we learn about God's miraculous direction for our lives has changed. ISN takes our anointed programs out of the box and gives you complete freedom to watch what you want, when you want, and where you want. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Or you can choose from dozens of powerful episodes of exclusive programs in our online library. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough whenever you need it, wherever you are. Download the free ISN app today. And now, back to our Prophecy TV event. Now, Rod, you say it all started with a promise. Yes. When 11 Jewish men were looking up in the sky, and it started with a promise. Can you imagine that moment? These men had walked with him. They'd watched him wipe the blindness from Bartimaeus' eyes. They watched him stop the woman's issue of blood. They watched him walking on the water at Jairus' house, raising the dead. They'd seen him manifest a mastery over demons, depravity, disease, even death itself at the tomb of Lazarus. And then everything went awry. Triumphantly, they rode him on a donkey into Jerusalem, throwing their palm leaves down in front of him, asking questions like, when you come into your kingdom, who's going to sit on your right hand and who's going to sit on your left? Suddenly, their dreams were crushed. Their hopes were shattered. They, they saw what they could not believe. They, they, they risked it. their whole life. They'd given it was up going everything. Down, it was going down the drain in their mind. Everything was lost. Peter stood cowering in fear, warming himself by the world's fire, saying, I never knew him. They watched him, the lion, become a lamb. They saw him kicked and prodded, beaten, whipped, bruised, battered, bleeding by which the very veins of God himself were emptied. They saw him nailed to that cross. And then it was finished. They wrapped him in grave clothes. They, they put him in the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. He was dead and they knew it. Everyone knew it. Never again would a rose smell as sweet. Never again would you feel the flushed cheek of an infant child against yours. Hope was dead. Joy was dead. Peace was dead. And they knew it. And then suddenly, on the third day, the stone got rolled away. He appeared to them again. And then just as quickly... They saw him rise from Mount Olivet, overlooking the Kidron Valley. They saw him become smaller and smaller and smaller until he vanished out of sight, and an angel came and declared, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? This same Jesus, not a different one, this same Jesus, exactly alike in every essential detail and quality, this same Jesus that you see go away shall come again in like manner. Now think about that. A lot today would want us to believe that we're going to metamorphosize our way into the coming of Christ. Look, he came with a shout, he got up with a shout, and he's coming back with a shout. And, and, and that promise... He will come again, is as sure today as it was when those 22 eyes 
watched him leave Mount Olivet. He will come again in like manner as we have seen him go. Okay, that begs a question. The book Somehow that is I the most graphic, the most graphic book for the end times, the most graphic, mm. is called the book of Revelation. Yes. Why is it <laughs> that so many Christians bypass that book <laughs> or they bypass it for two reasons. One, uh, they don't understand right. it, and they're pragmatic. Right. They say, I can't understand it. I'm not, right, right. not going to waste my time. Right. Uh, or they think it's so filled with fear and gloom and doom and darkness yes. that they don't want to touch it. Why is it? Well, I think it's because we, have, as Christian ministers, have we we put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. We put, <laughs> we put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. We're looking at the wrong thing. Now, in the book, I describe the Antichrist, but I don't spend a lot of time there because if you believe you're not on the given, Lord Jesus you're Christ, you're not given free advertising to the Antichrist. I'm not. Look, look, look. <laughs> he's he, look. Look, I'm not making light of him, but first of all, he never rules over the whole world. At most, he rules over a third of it, and he doesn't do a good job at that. Listen, folks have had too much presented to them from the book of Revelation because gospel ministers want to get as many eyes and ears as they can. Well, they're no different than Hollywood, you know. In a, in a recent Batman film, the villain is heard to say that people just want to see the world burn. And that's the way a lot of gospel ministries present the book of Revelation. But they're off base from the very first title of the book. This is not the revelation of the Antichrist. This is not the revelation of the three-headed, four-headed frog beast. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, given to his servant John on the island of Patmos, 50 miles off the coast of Ephesus, with nothing but wild beasts for company. You know, when I heard you teach on the book of Revelation, you did something that I didn't see before. You put together a timeline. Right. And as people understand the timeline sure. and the just the brief teaching mm -hmm. on some of the things going on, yeah. I believe anyone can read the book of Revelation with understanding from heaven, but it must be important because it's the only book that promises <laughs> a blessing. Yes. And maybe that's why yes. so many people are blocked from reading it Absolutely. because the devil doesn't want them to have a blessing. That's it. That's it. Go ahead and preach, Sid. That's, <laughs> preach on. That's, that's absolutely it. The devil attacked my vocal cords because he didn't want me to speak. The devil attacks our desire for the book of Revelation because it's our book. It's the finale. So I thought about 9-11. I'm old enough to remember that, of course. I remember the horror of that day, but the horror was mainly based on fear of what was coming next. The unknown. So the adversary wants you to be fearful today of what's coming next. So he puts up this smoke screen. Let me, let me explain something to you. Right now, we understand 9-11. We understand where the pieces fit. We understand what the timeline was. But when we saw those World Trade Center buildings collapsing, we didn't know that our homes might not be next. Well, God d gave us a recording. Now, I like sports, and sometimes I record sports because they're on when I'm preaching somewhere. <laughs> so I'll record the game, and I'll tell everybody, now don't tell me anything about it because I want to watch the game. Sure. Do you know what? The game was already over when I started watching it. And it, it did not change the outcome of the game, but it did change my response to it. Because most of the time, one of our leaders comes along and says, your team won or <laughs> your team lost. And so, and so it is with the book of Revelation. God 
recorded the end time for us, let us know exactly what's going to happen and told us we win. So it doesn't. So all you have to do is read it. So you don't see it as a book of gloom and doom. You see it as a book of victory. Look, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ is not even seen in the book of Revelation on earth after Revelation chapter 2. It's about God's determined dealings, which you love so much, with the nation of Israel. The seven years of tribulation is not for believers. Three and a half years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation, like the world's never seen. But we'll be in heaven faster than the fleetest hoof ever struck a pavement, faster than a wheel ever turned upon an axle. The magnificent magnitude of Christ's perfect person sweeping out. Can you imagine it? From north to south and east to west. It won't matter where you are. If you're born again, yeah, if you're five miles under the crusty surface of this people planted in a coal mine or flying around at 500 miles an hour at 41,000 feet in a jet airliner, he's going to bring you out of here and he has not appointed you to wrath, but to blessing. God reserves his wrath for his enemies, and you are not one. Now, you're talking about an immediate transition. Explain. <laughs> immediate. I often, when I'm preaching, tell folks to do this. Just as quickly as you can, blink your eye. Absent from the body present with the Lord. That fast. That fast. Look, folks say, well, you know, it's at the speed of light. Well, not so, because the speed of light can be measured. 144,000 miles a second. Can't believe I remembered that, Sid. You dug Haven't deep. I have thought of that for a while. <laughs> 144,000. But God said, before your mind, your brain, can transmit the electrical impulse for you to say my name, I'll be there. Before, that fast, he's coming. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I, I have to ask you this question. I'm, I've got to. A lot of people look at all the signs of the return of mm. Jesus, but... He was very specific. He said there was one sign. What yeah. was that one sign we should be looking One for? sign, you, and I know you love it. That's why I asked. The <laughs> restoration of, yeah, there'll be wars and rumors of sure. wars. The restoration of the nation of Israel to her biblical homeland. In 1917, General Allenby went into Jerusalem. He walked in to show honor to the holy city. Then, that was a hundred years ago. Then in 1967, the Six-Day War unified the city of Jerusalem. That's a double jubilee this year. Hmm. A double jubilee of the possession of that shimmering diamond on a velvet couch, the city of Jerusalem, I get, I get choked up in my heart just thinking about that place. If you've never been there, go with Sid Roth. That'd be a blessing to you. And, and if you don't go with Sid, go with Rod. Well, <laughs> listen, listen. When they came... So the one sign that's spell it. it out. That's it. When you see the fig tree... Blossoming. And a fig tree is a type of the nation is. Oh, zero. Yes. And he's coming. That generation will not will pass. Will not pass. That was the sign. That was it. Did you know that when John saw Jesus on the throne, he didn't just say one throne, he saw <laughs> many. Want to know who was on the other thrones? The answer will shock and surprise many of you. Stay with us. We will return with more of our Prophecy TV event. 
Satan wanted to silence Rod Parsley and take him out. He received a shocking diagnosis of cancer on his vocal cord, but Rod Parsley could not be silenced. God healed him, and he is ready to share with you a powerful prophetic message about God's soon coming grand finale. Rod Parsley wants to share what God revealed to him about a roadmap for living victoriously in the volatile days of the end times. Find out how to be prepared for the return of our soon coming King. Call right now to get Rod Parsley's must read prophetic book, The Finale, and his powerful four part audio CD teaching series, Revelation Debunking the Myths of Prophecy. Plus, his exclusive audio CD message, especially for you. You can be made whole. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9474. The whole book of Revelation is about gaining a new perspective of Jesus. Are you ready for that? Through Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, you will understand that the book of Revelation is not about doom and gloom, but rather it is your guide to the absolute victory and ultimate liberty that God has always intended for you. Clearly understand God's prophetic timeline concerning the end-time events in America, Israel, and the world that are about to unfold on planet Earth. Find out all you need to know about the great day of God's wrath, the 144,000 witnesses, who will be the Antichrist, Christ, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the great white throne judgment, the reality of heaven and hell, and so much more. Through Rod Parsley's powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, debunking the myths, you will never be confused again about the book of Revelation. Walk with Rod Parsley through every verse of every chapter of the book of Revelation in four easy to understand messages. Find out what is true and which are myths concerning current prophecy teaching. Plus, as a special bonus, you will receive Rod Parsley's exclusive audio CD message, especially for you. You can be made whole. Rod Parsley shares about the greatest attack on his health that he ever faced, vocal cord cancer. Learn how God's Word became such a vital part of his healing. Understand how you can obtain your healing. It includes Rod Parsley's anointed prayer for you to receive your breakthrough, your miracle. And now we are at God's great finale. The curtain is not coming down, it's going up on the final scene of human drama and it's about to play out right before your eyes. Time is short. Don't delay in getting Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, debunking the myths of prophecy, plus his exclusive audio CD message especially for you. You can be made whole. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9474. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box. 39222 Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9474 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our Prophecy TV event. Rod, according to Scripture, yes, we spoke about this before. The According to the whole timeline, yes. the clock starts Ticking fast. <laughs> yes. When G and and a lot of people say, well, he said there'll be signs, and they miss. He said there'll be a sign, singular. A sign. What shall be the sign yes. of your coming and the end of the age? He was very clear. When you see that fig tree putting forth her branches, he's speaking, of course, prophetically of the return of the nation of Israel to their homeland. That clock began May 1948, right. a day that will live famously in the hearts of all God's people forever. What, uh, uh, you, you have this timeline which just makes the book of Revelation <laughs> so simple. What is next on oh. the prophetic timeline? Well, we're right now in the church age. The very next event, will be when the magnificent magnitude of his per person sweeps out from north to south and east to west, and his appearing in the sky, spoken of in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we will be caught up, rapazzo, we will be raptured off this planet, and then we'll begin the seven years 
of tribulation, three and a half and three and a half, which will culminate the last day of the tribulation period becomes the first day of the second coming, which begins the millennial reign of Christ when his steps on the Mount of Olives and the bitter waters become sweet and he sets up his earthly kingdom on Temple Mount in that restored temple, the third temple, and rules and reigns for a thousand years. At the end of the thousand years, final judgment, the end of final judgment, eternity. Uh, you, you know, Rod, I see a lot of believers wrestle with and uh, as when will the rapture be? Right. What, you know, with the tribulation, right, et cetera, right, right, am right, I right. going through it, et cetera. But correct me if I'm wrong, that's not the issue. Not the the issue. issue is not when, no. that is if you will be <laughs> caught up in the air. Amen. So the, there is something going on in the media today oh. that is scary bad. It is. And I hear people saying that when you get saved, right. you repent, obviously, mm -hmm. but then you, it's taken care of all your repentance forever. And even if you're with unconfessed sin, right. you will go to heaven. What I, would you say? Well, Sid, I, I appreciate you asking me that question because, you know, far be it from me to ever make trouble. I, I do my best to, you know, step around issues that might but be a little But wait a second, touchy. God sent you back to say what you're <laughs> saying right now. I have, somebody <laughs> said the other day, when did you ever sidestep an issue? Oh, <laughs> well, I was thinking Look, that. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, thank, thankful for the question because I need to make it as Kentucky plain as I can make it for you. That is false doctrine, which will cause you to believe a lie. Because you believe it doesn't make it so. You can believe a lie, and this Bible says you're damned. The Bible also says these are they who have not had their names blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Wouldn't it stand to reason, my dear beloved brother and sister, that if somebody's name is not blotted out, somebody else's name will be blotted out, or he would have never made that distinction. Grace, grace, wonderful grace. No wonder they call it amazing. It is available to free us from sin and to keep us from sinning. The only sin God cannot forgive, according to his word, is that which you refuse to confess or which you refuse to repent. The modern church is doing everything it can. Modernists, revisionists are doing everything that they can to help you sear your own conscience. Right. This is dangerous. I speak lovingly, but I speak clearly. We will not allow the grace of Jesus Christ, our Father's supreme sacrifice of his Son, to endure such untruth. Jesus loves you. He will forgive you if you repent and if you live a holy life circumspectly in front of him and the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Grace, <laughs> grace is not the grace to sin. <laughs> it's the enabling power of God to overcome Hallelujah. your sin. Let's call grace what it is. Amen. It's an amazing commodity. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing grace. Yes. But I have to ask you this question. John saw Thrones. He did. Who's going to be on those thrones? We know Jesus is on the throne, right. but who's going to be on the thrones? Can you imagine it, Sid? I know we can't. Eyes not seen, ears not heard, hasn't even been able to enter into our hearts the things that God has for us. Oh, we've seen little glimpses of it, but we're going to a celestial city, my dear friend, 
There are 400 billion cherubim in immediate proximity to that throne, and all of them are crying with a loud voice. Some folks say, Pastor Rod, I've been to your crusades. I've been to your church. I've been to your churches. They're loud. Well, we're just imitating heaven. It's going to be a loud place. Those thrones, they're meant for those who have had their robes washed white in the Lamb's blood of life. That's right. You're going to have one, and I'm going to have one. And if you don't want yours, I'm big enough to sit on two. <laughs> you, you know, Jesus said, Jesus said, that in the original language, in the Greek of the New Covenant, this is eternal life, mm. that you might have experiential knowledge of me. There are people that are convicted of sin and judgment and righteousness yes. right now. Those that are addicted to pornography, those that are having sex outside of marriage, oh, those that uh, believe marriage is not between a man and a woman. You don't need me to do this. I didn't know anything, nothing but I knew I was a sinner oh. and I needed help. Yes. And I just prayed a prayer, but he knew my heart. Yes. Jesus, help. Yes. Jesus, help. Yes. I'm telling you that if you will tell God, I mean, I read the book of Revelations, and he said many of the sins that seem acceptable by today's society right, right, right. will prevent you from going to the most marvelous experience a human can have, a kingdom without evil, without the devil. Get right with God. Tell him you're sorry for yes, your sins. Yes. You believe the blood of Jesus is amazing grace. Ask him to live inside you yes. and be your Lord. Shortly, I'm going to turn Rod loose for healing and miracles. If you're not watching, on Middle East TV or ISN, download our free app now. Just go to the App Store, type in my name, Sid Roth, S-I-D-R-O-T-H, and touch the orange ISN app. Once you have it, you can watch us anytime, 24-7, on any computer or any smartphone. Right now, before our break, here's Harvest Music Live, and wouldn't you know it, singing this is amazing <laughs> grace. <laughs> Jesus, 
Turn with more of our Prophecy TV event. Call right now to get Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, Debunking the Myths of Prophecy. Plus, his exclusive audio CD message is specially for you. You can be made whole. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9474. Through Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, you will understand that the book of Revelation is not about doom and gloom, but rather it is your guide to the absolute victory and ultimate liberty that God has always intended for you. Clearly understand God's prophetic timeline concerning the end time events in America, Israel, and the world that are about to unfold on planet Earth. Find out all you need to know about the great day of God's wrath, the 144,000 witnesses, who will be the Antichrist, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the great white throne judgment, the reality of heaven and hell, and so much more through Rod Parsley's powerful four Part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, Debunking the Myths. You will never be confused again about the book of Revelation. Walk with Rod Parsley through every verse of every chapter of the book of Revelation in four easy to understand messages. Find out what is true and which are myths concerning current prophecy teaching. Plus, as a special bonus, you will receive Rod Parsley's exclusive audio CD message, especially for you. You can be made whole. Rod Parsley shares about the greatest attack on his health that he ever faced, vocal cord cancer. Learn how God's Word became such a vital part of his healing. Understand how you can obtain your healing. It includes Rod Parsley's anointed prayer for you to receive your breakthrough, your miracle. And now we are at God's great finale. And it's about to play out right before your eyes. Time is short. Don't delay in getting Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, Debunking the Myths of Prophecy. Plus, his exclusive audio CD message is specially for you. You can be made whole. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9474. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box. 39222 Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9474 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our Prophecy TV event. You know, the presence of God is so strong in this studio. Yeah. Studio audience, do you feel what I'm feeling? <laughs> I, I, and you at home, are you feel because it goes right through the airwaves. But I am not going to let go of something I heard Rod Parsley say. I heard him that God told him that he, because of what he's gone through, his anointing for everything is going to be seven times yes. greater. Yes. Now, I believe that it's even greater than seven times because seven is just perfection. I receive it. So, well, I'll take that perfection. I receive it. That, that means, wow, it means once again, before we go off the air, I want to thank our broadcast partners, GB America, METV, Middle East Television. Our next ISN live event on June 15 will feature people that have died and gone to heaven mm but were sent back just for you. What did they see? What did they hear? How did they feel? Don't miss it. And don't forget, when we leave GEB America, this program will continue on METV, Middle East Television, and ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. So be sure to stay with us to continue watching on ISN. You can just log on to sidroth.org slash ISN or download our free ISN app. Just go to the App Store, type in my name, S-I-D-R-O-T-H, Sid Roth, and touch the orange ISN app. Once you have it, you can watch us anytime, 24-7, on any computer or smartphone in just a moment. I'm going to turn Rod Parsley loose 
to minister and pray for your healing. So stay with us on ISN and METV. I said to you, Rod, Mm -hmm. before we went on the air, I believe that you are going to be astounded at the miracles that are about ready to take place. I agree, Sid. And and I'm going to tell you something else. When a man goes through what you went through, Mm -hmm. you've seen creative miracles. Yes. There are so many people that are hurting. Yes. And they don't know where to turn. Right. Or what to do. Right. But I know something. The glory of God (laughs) has been released on planet Earth. Amen. And the Word of God Mm -hmm. in the glory of God Mm -hmm. will cause the same works that Jesus did, except he tops himself. (laughs) He said, you will do the same works that I have done and even greater. And those greater, I've been talking about it till it's real inside mm-hmm. of me, Rod. Mm-hmm. Creative miracles. Yes. I mean, so without an arm. Yes, sir. So, the arm's coming out. Amen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. loose. I happen to see what happened in the spiritual atmosphere when Harvest Music Live is singing. And did you know the whole earth sings Harvest Music Live? (laughs) Oh! 
You may be seated. You, you know, I was just thinking about something when, as you were saying what you've just recently gone through. Uh, I recently had something minor, some minor surgery, and they put me to sleep. And they said to me, and I didn't like this, by the way, they said to me, uh, you will be awake during this surgery, but you won't remember anything that happened. <laughs> and but I knew everything that was going on while they were doing it. Yeah. And I was, and I knew that I was surrounded with people that didn't know God. Yeah. And here's what I found myself doing. Mm. I found myself confessing scriptures yes. on healing out loud. Yes. I mean, I, nonstop, I was doing that yes. even to the point where I said, I hope I'm not offending you. No, no, it's okay. Go out there and slice it. But you know what? In a time like that, what you have in your heart is oh, going to yes. come out. Yes. And I have to believe that you, when you started meditating and speaking mm. out loud the promises Absolutely. of God, they are burned yes. inside of your yes. heart. Yes, yes. I commission you uh, to move thank in you, a Lord. minimum of seven thank times you, more power. Thank Rod you, Rod Parsley. Tell Sid Roth you love him, will you? I mean, this is an this is an incredible and unusual, supernatural man, isn't he? He, you can tell he's enthused because he's infused, right? I mean, he has the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that inside you right now, in your, even in your physical man, you have an electromagnetic field that is detectable scientifically within 10 feet of where you're standing. Did you ever have someone come in a room and it just seems that the whole atmosphere just changes just when they walk in the room? I have such men as Dr. Lester Sumrall and such men as Dr. Oral Roberts and such men as Dr. T.L. Osborne and Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen Sr. and uh, let's see, John Osteen, who in my opinion was the greatest pastor gift I've ever known. Not Joel, he's a wonderful friend of mine, but John, his daddy, was just a pastor. And I felt that presence when I came into the presence of my dear friend, Sid Roth, today. He's infused with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so are you. Now, you can act interested anytime you'd like. Just go ahead. I want to share with you three very basic things because I've discovered it's not the complicated things that keep us from a miracle. It's the simple things. God told a king, go dip seven times in the Jordan. And he had all sorts of issues with that. Some of you think if this person would pray for you or that person could pray for you or if you could be in the presence of somebody, then you'd have a great miracle. Some of you think your ministries would be magnified if there were just a few more miracles in your ministry. You don't build your ministry on miracles. They're not your miracles. They're his miracles. Hallelujah. I found 
that we have to answer some very, very basic questions. But let's start off where I started off. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. My son, that includes daughters, and in that high priestly prayer when the disciples said, look, Jesus, when you boil this whole thing down and you get to the root of it all, when it's all distilled down, teach us to pray. They said that because he was weary. He was tired of dealing with people. He was weary with rebellious disciples. He was weary with saying, oh, ye of little faith. So he went away to pray and pray he did. And the disciples verifiably stumbled over his body prostrate on the ground. Seeing him pray, they had never witnessed a man pray like he prayed. It seemed that he was having a direct conversation with an almighty, invisible, unseeable, theretofore unknowable God. But he was in a relationship with him to such a degree that there was intimacy, there was presence. So the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus began that discourse with those two away amazing words, our Father. Do you understand today? He's your Father. Do you understand that you are begotten of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God? Do you understand that the same Spirit that invaded the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and raised to life again the three-day dead body of the Prince of God is personally present, resident on the inside of you right now? People want me to believe, oh yes, the spirit of a man shall sustain all of his infirmity. The same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in me. And yet, you have no joy, no peace, no power, no victory. I'm not talking about some third watered down version of God. I'm not talking about a cousin four times removed by marriage. I'm talking about the self same spirit that raised to life again the body of Jehovah Joshua Messiah. If he can raise the dead as he did first in Nain streets and then as he did in Jairus bedroom and then as he did for Lazarus in the burial place of Bethany. If if he can raise to life dead bodies, he can take care of your sinus condition. Your Bible says he's the same yesterday. Did he ever heal anybody and you acknowledge it? I'm an audience participation preacher. Do you know anybody that he ever healed? If he healed them, he'll heal you. He's no respecter of persons. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. Jehovah said, I am Jehovah, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob will not be consumed. He wounded for your transgressions. You just got that quickening, didn't you? Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Every person in your family, every person in your family will be saved, healed, delivered. I see bondages and addiction. They're going now in the name of Jesus. I believe you to do that, Lord. I believe God to do it for you as well. He never changed. If he healed Bartimaeus, he'll heal you. If he healed the woman with the issue of blood, he'll heal you. If he stopped the torrential storm on the Sea of Galilee, he'll stop the storm in your life. First of all, it wasn't a miracle that he stopped the storm. Every storm eventually ends. Stand up. Your storm's ending right now. Your storm is ending right now. Your storm is ending right now. 
I feel parents tugging on me right now about children. I need you to understand I'm not prophesying to her. I'm prophesying through her. She's just going to get the residue, but it will be more than enough because God is reaching out to you right now that a left breast is being healed right now by the power of God. Autism spectrum disorders, I rebuke you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, don't believe a man over believing God. Believe God right now. Accept the diagnosis as God telling you what to attack. He's just giving you the coordinates of the adversary. Now destroy him with the incoming of the word of God and the outgoing of prayer. Do it now. I agree right now that your storm is ending today. Do you know that what God told Ezekiel is true? God told Ezekiel what he does, God, is forever. You've had a tormenting situation that just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. It will leave today. It will never return to you. This affliction will not arise a second time. I'm talking to you. Everybody shout right now as the anointing is. It will not arise a second time. It will, something in eyes. Right now, God is touching that in your family. He's touching that right now in the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The miracle was not that the storm ceased. All storms eventually cease. The miracle was that it ceased now. Everybody say, now. You say, well, Pastor Rod, it took a while for your cancer to leave. I don't care when it left. It had to go from that moment. You see, Mark 11, 22 to 24 says, have faith in God. Somebody that's happy about it, that he didn't say rod, just clap right now because he didn't say rod. He said, just stand right there because I'm getting, I'm getting a good anointing of agreement coming from you right now. So just stay. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're from, but I know where you're going. I can see where you're going. It's a high place. It's not a low place. Uh, what was I telling you? Huh? Mark 11, 22, 24. Have faith in God. So stop trying. All right, you can be seated for a moment. Stop trying. Look at somebody next to you right now and say, Stop trying to have faith. Why are you trying to have faith? God didn't tell you try to have faith. God didn't tell you work to have faith. He said, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea or to this mountain. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, not his mind, in his heart. He shall, he said, have Paul's house right here. Where do you live? Huntersville. Huntersville. I have no idea where that is. Is she a pretty good cook? She is. What do you like to cook? I'm going to see if I like it. Chicken enchiladas, girl. <laughs> Chicken enchiladas. Don't say that now. Now you stepped over the line. She said, roll tight to a Buckeye. You don't say that. You don't say that. But if I came over to y'all's house, right? You hadn't invited me. I'm just suggesting. If I came over to y'all's house, right? And you, I walked through the door and you said, have some enchiladas. Would you be expecting me to make them? He said, have faith. Why don't you just go ahead and have it? You're not getting me right now. He said, have faith. Have a pocket hanky. Have it. Take it. Receive it. It's yours. 
Jesus gave it. Suffering, sighing, crying, dying on that rugged, cruel, angry, mean, biting beam called Calvary. He said, have faith. Take it. It's yours. Receive it. And then move in it. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. The questions regarding divine healing are so simple. Number one, the number one question, is it God's will to heal me? Now, healing's like the love of God. You spend too much time talking about God loves the world. Most folks don't care nothing about the world. And it doesn't help you anyway. God loves the nations. You sit in church and say, God loves her. God loves him. But do you really believe to the core of your being that he loves you? Because it's not about whether he loves me or not. And I'm here to tell you he loves you. He loves you in the morning sun and he loves you in the evening rain. He loves you when you get it right, and he loves you more when you get it wrong. He loved you from heaven to earth to hell, back to earth, back to heaven, and back to earth again because he refused to live without you. The truth of the matter is he just cannot stop loving you. He loves you. I dare you to shout right there where you are, God loves me. Not my wife, not my children, not my preacher. God loves me. He loves me. He loves me in my fidelity and in my infidelity. He can't stop loving me. Is it his will to heal you? If I can prove the answer to you, beyond all doubt, will you accept it? Because then you would have to leave this room or wherever you're watching right now, you would have to make the determination that it is his will to heal you. Oftentimes, we really start to believe God when we're diagnosed with a life-threatening disease, but we put up with migraine headaches. Why do we put up with what Jesus won't? Jesus walked into the temple, and there was a man there with a withered hand. The man didn't say, would you heal me? Jesus said, come here. Stretch that hand out. Jesus was, with all due respect, kind of saying, I'm tired of looking at that. I came to heal that. I came to, oh, sorry. Subject to burst of enthusiasm. Look. He came to heal you, wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement of your peace laid upon him. With his stripes you were, therefore you are healed. Right now, shout, I'm healed. Faith comes five ways. Faith comes by the gift of faith. Faith comes by the fruit of faith. Faith comes when you're born again. God deals to every man the measure of faith. You act like you have no faith. Has anybody been to heaven? You've not been there, right? How many of you believe you're going there? How do you know? Oh, faith. Well, how do you know you're healed when your body says you're not? Say, I'm healed. Right now, I'm healed. So is it God's will? The only time Jesus was ever asked that question. Jesus did 19 major healing miracles in the book of Matthew alone. 19. 19 times he was asked, is it your will to heal me? To heal my mind, to heal my marriage, to heal my future, to heal my finances, to heal my... Is it your will to heal me? The only time he was ever directly asked that question is in Mark chapter 1 where a leper said... If you will, you can heal me. And Jesus answered 
in two syllables. Stop trying to be a theologian. Just listen to Jesus. Let him say this to you today. I will. I will. In other words, it is his will to. You can't, you can't give me 20 minutes. I will. Say he will. Well, wait a minute now. Mark 11, 22 to 24 says you shall have it. What's the devil going to do with people that know they shall have it? He didn't say you had it. He said you shall have it. Question number two, can you? Second question ever asked, can you heal me? <laughs> not, it, not will you, can you? I promise you, he can. I have a watch. It's proof somewhere there's a watchmaker. If it breaks, Kenneth Copeland gave me that one. If it breaks, I have no idea how to fix it. I have a hammer. That won't work. I have to take it to a watchsmith, don't I? And he can put it back together again. The third question is a very simple one. It's not one asked to Jesus. It's one Jesus asked you. At the pool of Bethesda, he said, will you be made whole? Those are the only three questions ever asked about divine healing. And they're all answered in the affirmative. They all say, he will heal you. Do you receive it? Yes. Give God a great hallelujah right now. Let, let, me, let me pray a prayer over you. It's a prayer that Moses was told by God. If he prayed it over the Jewish people, God's name would be sealed on yes, yes. But I'm praying it from this side Hallelujah. of Calvary. Hallelujah. The Lord has already blessed you. The Lord has mm. already smiled upon you. The Lord has already given you his shalom, we his receive. completeness in your spirit, soul, and body in we the receive. name of Jesus, the Messiah of Nazareth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Satan wanted to silence Rod Parsley and take him out. He received a shocking diagnosis of cancer on his vocal cord, but Rod Parsley could not be silenced. God healed him, and he is ready to share with you a powerful prophetic message about God's soon coming grand finale. Rod Parsley wants to share what God revealed to him about a roadmap for living victoriously in the volatile days of the end times. Find out how to be prepared for the return of our soon coming King. Call right now to get Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, Debunking the Myths of Prophecy. Plus, his exclusive audio CD message especially for you. You can be made whole. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9474. The whole book of Revelation is about gaining a new perspective of Jesus. Are you ready for that? Through Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, you will understand that the book of Revelation is not about doom and gloom, but rather it is your guide to the absolute victory and ultimate liberty that God has always intended for you. Clearly understand God's prophetic timeline concerning the end time events in America, Israel, and the world that are about to unfold on planet Earth. Find out all you need to know about the great day of God's wrath, the 144,000 witnesses, who will be the Antichrist, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the great white throne judgment, the reality of heaven and hell, and so much more. Through Rod Parsley's powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, debunking the myths, you will never be confused again about the book of Revelation. Walk with Rod Parsley through every verse of every chapter of the book of Revelation in four easy to understand messages. Find out what is true and which are myths concerning current prophecy teaching. Plus, as a special bonus, you will receive Rod Parsley Parsley's exclusive audio CD message, especially for you. You can be made whole. Rod Parsley shares about the greatest attack on his health that he ever faced, vocal cord cancer. Learn how God's Word became such a vital part of his healing. Understand how you can obtain your healing. It includes Rod Parsley's anointed prayer for you to receive your breakthrough, your miracle. And now we are at God's great finale. The curtain is not coming down, it's going up on the final scene of human drama. 
that it's about to play out right before your eyes. Time is short. Don't delay in getting Rod Parsley's must-read prophetic book, The Finale, and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, Revelation, Debunking the Myths of Prophecy. Plus, his exclusive audio CD message is specially for you. You can be made whole. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9474. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9474 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.